Hello friends, you're with the Lonesome Gamer and I'm playing American Megafauna. The game lost quite a bit of its tension during the last turns. I think well the, the main reasons are obvious. First of all um, Two species are extinct, so there is more space now, more room left for the others, so the competition is not that, uh, that, that strong. And second of all, the surviving species, they, they have, well, they kind of have established uh, their, uh, the biomes where they can survive they have established their position in the game and now we have this kind of balance which most uh, players can accept for now maybe the blue player should try to change things he's uh, pretty much behind and it seems like he might have some potential with his two genotypes here, or two extra genotype uh, in addition to his archetype. But it's not going to be so easy to, for him. I made a mistake, well at least one. It's this uh, thing here with this no displays, the African plate. When I uh, brought this uh, pine cypress forest into play, I should have, I think I should have removed the African plate. No displays doesn't mean that it cannot get extinct, uh, it just means that it doesn't go anywhere else. Um, Usually if you if you play a if you play a biome let's say I don't know let's say this one we, we play a biome on that one here then this becomes a displaced biome and that means it could for example go to an adjacent hex um where we find no um, uh, where there is a free space left. That would be possible. That's the displacement of biomes. And this is not possible with these no displaced biomes, so it would simply be extinct if the climax is lower than the new biome that comes into, game, into the game. But, uh, yeah, I messed this up, but it's not that important, I guess. Okay, now let's see what we get. We have, oh, well, interesting, we can just practice it now. The Riparian Herbacius Browse. And that will show up in the Horse Latitude, which is here in the middle. And uh, now we gotta place it here, because this uh, free biome a free space counts always as a zero climax. So that means we simply have now an additional biome, which is good. It requires the graze ability. So basically that means that only the red heights can enter this area. In addition, everyone gets a gene. Okay, we're gonna express cards now, and... Now, uh, the blue player is gonna play the sculling tail onto these dinosaurs here. It's a limp card, limp's card. So it goes down here. And that gives them now the maritime, the marine ability. So 
they are now able to enter that space because they also have an armor piercing DNA. Okay, fine. So now apart from the red tides entering this biome and the dinosaurs entering that one, uh, nothing else happened. So we continue drawing the next card and well, we have a swiftness gene here, or swiftness DNA, stiffened tail corset, digiti great hopping. That recesses all M cards, not allowed with M heritage. Hmm. Size of three. Well, let's see. So, Dinocroc gets it for a buck. And he's going to express it. down here and that would allow him now to enter the Zechstein C and because he controls the only predator that means that uh, he could then decide who survives and therefore that would give him the advantage in this biome. Okay, so finally after all the time here in isolation, Dinocroc finally managed to come back to the mainland and maybe he finds a way now um, to spread even more, but it's gonna be hard, that's for sure. He can only move two spaces, so he cannot go there, which would be interesting because of his insectivore ability and everything else seems more or less impossible to dominate. Yeah, so probably will stay here for now. Okay, so Dogface loses another buck and that is a technology, uh, it's a hand axe, scavenging of bone marrow, size 2 to 5 and that is a Husker ability. Well, these husker abilities are, th are something special. You can become a husker only in biomes that show this special nut. You can see that here. There a little bit. You can see that kind of a nut there. And if you are a husker, you don't compete with these herbivores nor with the carnivores, but you place your uh, your tents underneath the biome and well kind of have your own niche there but you need to use wins all predator dentition cars <clears throat> so that's a pretty cool uh, technology but no one has to use he has it in his hand but he cannot play it because that again requires some other things so hmm I mean, he could bid on it. Let's see. Okay, now in the end, nobody really wanted to bid on that. And... Um, well, I guess all that will happen is that the red tides will expand a little bit here on that biome. And nothing else is going to happen during that turn. Okay, next card and 
Oh, that's interesting. We have another genotype. Now, of course, Darkface wants to bid on that, but he only has four bucks left, so his chances are very low that he'll get that. Uh, it would be a... Whoop. I'm not even going to try to uh, spell that. It's just some kind of dinosaur here with a Swiftness ability or Hyraxis with a Husker ability. Hmm. So let's see. Okay, now Tutusker might come back into the game now. He paid five bucks for that. <clears throat> And wait a second. Dentition wins against genotype ties. Yeah, five bucks. Okay. Um, and he will use the mammal side, the hyraxis. <clears throat> so you can express that right away. And I think he's going to place it here, actually. Is he? Not sure. No, I don't think so. I'm going to place it here. That's a little sad. That would be now more fitting. But okay. Um, yeah, kind of sucks. I mean, these are no elephants, obviously. Uh, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make some Husker elephants there. <clears throat> so the cool thing is now I can replace one of these guys. Uh, with uh, one of these Hyraxes and then I can move right here. And here you can see we also have this Husker symbol. So that is absolutely great. I can start to live there. And uh, at least control two spaces, then it's still not absolutely fantastic because from there I cannot get any further. I'm afraid the next Husker symbol would be up here, but because my size is limited to two, I cannot make it there. But anyway, it's a start at least. Okay, we have a Milankovic P event. I shouldn't forget that. So that means this goes up here. This is the Aphelion Summer. Land weather. Terrestrial biomes with sun shrink. Land bloom terrestrial biomes in their preferred latitudes grow. Okay, now let's see. First we need to find the biomes with a sun. Ah, uh, shit. That is one. So this one is extinct now. That means these two guys will die. So he was kind of lucky that he made it into this area here. That he managed to get this uh, speed DNA before his biome goes down. Uh, let's see if we have more. That one also shrinks. It's the set ferns. Okay. So does that one, the cactus desert. Mm, I see the dunes, the sand dunes shrink. Clement oyster beds. Okay. And then biomes in their preferred. What? No, that one here. Terrestrial biomes in their preferred. 
Oh, we're only talking about terrestrial biomes. So that, ah, that means this one won't shrink and not also not that one because it was a maritime biome. I forgot about that. Okay. Yeah, fine. Um, but terrestrial biomes in the preferred latitudes grow. Now, we're looking for this symbol here. That's not the case here. Here we have again the sun. So basically, this goes simply back again. Mm -hmm. And here we have the tropical biomes now. Here is written tropical, but we don't have the symbol. I'm not sure what that means. I'm gonna leave it. Strange. Okay. Well, that's it. Not too much happened, I guess. Okay. Hmm. I think in the end, only the sand dunes shrinked and maybe one other. Okay, fine. <clears throat> okay, so luckily for the for the Hyraxis, the Caucasus Bridge stayed clear, so now they are able to move over here. No, wait a minute. It's the the tiny elephants. So they can now move here and become a husker on that biome here. Now that that biome shrinked so to survive they can move here. Um, but I think they will die there anyway. Yeah they won't survive the culling there. Um, and that's basically all that happened in this turn I guess. Okay actually I realized that Dinocroc could enter this area here, the, the tropical rainforest with this insectoid niche he will be able to compete with the toothed bird and because he controls the only hunter here uh, that would allow him to to live in that biome too. And from then on he could maybe even go down here. So there might be a chance for Dinocroc to grow even more. So I'm I'm gonna move down with him here. And that I should have done that in order, but it's sometimes hard if you play with if you play that solitaire and it doesn't make a big difference now. Okay, cool. Yeah, Dinocroc has a size of three, so you can move two spaces. So this is now absolutely possible. So things are getting a little more interesting now, again. And, uh, yeah, we see some interesting competition. Cool. Let's see what the next card brings. Oh! Another tool use. Now that is cool. Um, uh, yeah, well, maybe not that cool. <laughs> um, it's now sad that the hand axe is gone. I didn't, I didn't expect tool use to show up. Requires tentacles, pipe trunk, forebrain, prehensive tail, vermiform. What's well, interesting, um, this one you could actually play with the dactyl lips, but that one not. So basically that means that nobody can play that card. Now let's see if we, maybe anyone, somebody will buy it anyway. Okay, nobody was willing to bid on that. So basically what will happen is now we can expand here a little bit. 
is the only one of interest. Dinah Krog. And then you can move down here. And, well, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it then. Okay, and, well, the competition here, Insectivore is the, uh, the niche, and, um, the birds have that, but not these uh, maritime dinosaurs, so they are killed and they can live together here. But the next time the population will grow, the birds have to go away too, simply because uh, the predator can then decide who will win and that is also controlled by Dinocroc. So Dinocroc is doing really good now. So a comeback is definitely possible. Okay, we are approaching the end of the Mesozoic era where we'll have our first uh, scoring round. So two cards are left and this is an M DNA cardiform needle teeth or plankton filtration baleen bristles. Recesses G cards not allowed with G heritage. Well <sighs> interesting. Hmm, who might want that? Okay, the big lizard, the blue player, he gets that for a buck. Nobody was really interested in it, so he takes it. And then we see some expansion here and uh, well, let's place a tent here, although I'm not sure if this guy can survive there. And then let's see if the... if the Dinocroc can expand even further. I don't think so, actually. Hmm. Doesn't look like that. No, no, probably not. So what happens is, here, this sucker dies and, wow, that actually means he's extinct. I didn't realize that. But I think there is nowhere he can go. Okay, well, it seems indeed the birds are now extinct. So that species goes away and Blue is more and more in trouble. He only has one population tent here with the dinosaurs and these big lizards here. Okay, they are, they survive that for now. <coughs> and Dinocroc really did well during the last turns. This digitigrade hopping <coughs> helped them a lot actually. Okay, cool. So we now come to the last card of the Mesozoic, no, yeah, of the Mesozoic era and Okay, these are Digging Claws. Now that's kind of an interesting card. It's Nocturnal and Insectivore. So, well, it kind of sucked because 
of the birds could have got that. They might have had a chance to survive. They might have had a chance to uh, improve their ability here in the niche. But now it's too late for these guys. So, um, hmm. Let's see who might be interested in that. Okay, now. Um, Protocrog is going to get that for a buck. Nobody was really interested in this DNA card. So, he takes it for a buck. Okay. And now the end of the Cretaceous, therefore the end of the Mesozoic era, and therefore our first scoring round. And, uh, well, let's see how we're doing. Okay, the result is pretty clear. Beak Lizard and the two Tusker, they are at the end with five, and of course Dogface has no point at all. So these are doing pretty bad. Protocroc has 14 points and Dinocroc, this guy, he did a big big leap. He has now 23 points. So that is really kind of interesting but his, uh, his opportunity to spread out into the mainland gave him lots of additional points. So he's now far in the lead and I have my doubts that we will see big changes during the Xenozoic era. There are not too many cards left now, but you know, no, I mean, it might be still possible. Okay, I think uh, that things were getting a little more interesting during this video. Uh, Quite a few things happened. We saw Dinocroc spread out, the, t the birds got extinct, here we have the, the Husker elephants, so finally maybe there will be a little bit hope for this guy um, <clears throat> to spread out a little more, but uh, because the points of this scoring round and the next one will be added. Uh, now he's so far behind so I think it's very unlikely that he still has a chance to win that somehow. And I also have my doubts that Dogfish, well maybe he will come back into the game somehow but it's going to be uh, impossible for him to at least come close uh, to get some real valuable points. Okay, anyway, so um, hope to see you in the next video or on lonesomegamer.com. Bye.